Hi guys, this is Pika10 and welcome to your 11th Roblox Low Scripting tutorial. Now in this tutorial we'll be covering the return keyword. A lot of people don't know what the return keyword actually does. It doesn't explain it anywhere well, they assume you will know it already. Most of the scripters now have t have had to work it out by themselves, but this can be hard for some people to do. So today I'm going to be teaching you all about that. Now return builds on from the functions we covered in the last tutorial. So to start with, I'm just going to make a function, whoops, foo. By the way, you can undo stuff in Roblox Studio by pressing Control and Z, otherwise you're going to accident accidentally delete all your script like I've done many times. Um, now, we'll choose return in a function, it has to be the last um, word in a, uh, the last statement, line, whatever, in a block. So a block is basically anything that has this symbol in this minor symbol here. So it's usually a blue word that starts a block. Anything that you can minimise and maximise for that. So if I say return 1, I'll explain what this actually does later. This can only be last thing in a block. So this is a block because it ends the block there. It will minimise all of that. If, but if I then, you, I can't put something after it. I, c I couldn't do that after it. Um, and that, more examples of blocks are stuff like if if statements, they're also blocks. Um, also, while while loops, um, for, repeat. Um, they are all blocks that you, um, return can be at the end of. So, if I now call the function foo, guess what this will do? This function will run this function, return one, whatever that does, and then end. Sorry about that, my phone rang again. What was I saying? Oh yeah, we're about to test what this right. Oh, I already pressed play, good. Well, hopefully, as you can see, as you probably won't be able to see because it's blurry, it um, has not done anything at all in the output, or anything at all in the actual game. At all. It says running script returning, which is the name of the script, so no, nothing happens at all. So if I press rewind, nothing will go back. Now, what return does is this is actually quite hard to explain and understand is it basically makes this function whenever you call it um this function or uh, this this will become what this returns hopefully that makes sense so if i say a equals foo and because it's calling this function and this function returns one then a will become one if i said return five a will, a will call foo and foo will run, it will return 5 A will become 5 hopefully that's you can understand that now you can also use you can return anything, absolutely anything so if I can return high then A will become high I can, if I say return workspace dot part even if it's not part in workspace that return nil but if there was something called part in workspace it would return that so a would now be exactly the same as you it as if you'd done a equals workspace dot part the same as if you'd done return five these two lines are basically exactly the same as soon as you change that that's different so what's the use of this you might be wondering well for examples there's uh, we've covered this already, I think, as a math function called math.random. This function, math.random, uses re return, as does any function, to um, give you the random number. So if you said a equals math. I don't know why I'm putting it in here. If you said a equals math.random, because math and um, minimum maximum. Because math.random is a fun um, for, for, for a start, actually, 1 and 10 are the arguments which we covered in the last tutorial. So it's exactly the same as a normal function, math.random, except they can generate a random number because they have C-sided stuff. Um, this function returns a random number between 1 and 10, which means this basically becomes a random number between 1 and 10, so A will also be. So it's exactly the same... Actually, if, 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 no, I can't show you because I can't make a random number, but 
that will become a random number between 1 and 10 because it returns. Exactly the same as say a equals instance dot new part. If I said this, if I, when I say this, this function returns the part that it creates. And so then now I can go a dot parent. A is the part it created. Otherwise, how would I do anything like that? But what's the use of it if you're doing it, for example? So if, say, I did, if I had a massive function that's calculated who has, so say, in the script, I had, I wanted to say who had the most score, who had the highest score out of anyone, then I would put, and I, and I wanted to do this um, loads and loads of times, so I'd say get get winning player then I say uh, I haven't shown you how to loop through the children of objects using the get children function yet because it involves tables and I will cover tables in a later tutorial but for now I'm just gonna comment and say stuff then player equals the player who won And then I will return player. So if I wanted loads and loads of times in the script to say, right, and every five seconds I want to find out who won, and then at the end of a game I want to find out who's got the highest score, and then every other times I also want to find who has the highest score, I just do A equals get winning player, or whatever you want to get it to be. So I'll just do winning player, player or something equals get winning player and then this would now be what it returns so I can also do something like if I wanted to put an argument here saying text text um, text equals text text now hopefully you understand what this is because we've already covered the concatenation operator so basically text will now become the same as text and then text straight after it and then I've and I return text so if I now did I'll change something appropriate like double text if you can double a text um, then I go print double actually yeah this is a point as well you don't have to set them to a variable just like just like we've done um, stuff with arguments in math.random I'm not sure if we have but I'm gonna say we have uh, so with this one say let's just comment that out if I did function if I said this then I then if I printed foo Make sure you get the right in the brackets. By the way, it has to end this one. Has to call this function and then end the print function, which is this one. Um, if I did this, because this becomes one, this would also print one. I don't have to do a equals foo and then print a. I can sim I can simply just do foo. If I if I'm only going to use it once, I would do that. If I'm going to use it more than once, I set it to a variable just for the print typing. Or if it's about if it changes. So if I did this now, it will print one. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can, but it's, it has printed one. So now I'll just get rid of that and get back this script. Oops, delete the F as well. So now if I if I now use print double text. Hi, hi, I'm awesome because we are. We are. I am. Uh, press play now. Hi, I'm awesome. Hi, I'm awesome. It repeats it twice because this fun if I run through this function, double text, it will print. This prints whatever's in its arguments. Its argument is double text, so it will print what this function returns. If it will go, go through this function and text is what's in the brackets like we covered in the last show. This is an argument here. So text is now hi, I'm awesome. Text is now hi I'm awesome dot dot which means um, added to this string. 
then high and awesome again, and then it returns text. And because text here has just been set to text high and awesome and then high and awesome again, this returns high and awesome twice, like it was before. And so this becomes what this returns, which is high and awesome, high and awesome. And then it prints high and awesome, high and awesome because it's in here. Hopefully you understood that. That's just an example that I could think of that wasn't too easy. Um, returning is one of the most useful features of any language. Every single language I know uses functions, arguments and returns. So if you've understood those perfectly, then you're going to have a good grasp on every single language um, that you will learn. So that's all for now. In the next tutorial, I'll be going into events, how to find them, how to use them, how to connect them to a function, and what they do, basically. And, um, you'll find a lot more there, but that's one of the tutorials you'll find more exciting, because then in the tutorial after the next, we'll be using the events to make the nuke actually work. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.